From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Oren Vance. Oren Vance? Yeah, you sent me up to Arsenic seven years ago, you remember? Huh? Oh, yes, I think I do. Uh, you know, I thought a lot about coming out and killing you, Dollar. Mm-hmm. But instead, I'm going to do you a favor. Yeah? Yeah. I think maybe you and I can work out something. You know, this sounds like double talk to me. Don't you give me any routine, Dollar. I heard them all. I'm calling you with information about the Todd case. Todd? I don't remember. Well, look it up. It cost your company $75,000. Hey. Hello? Vance? Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Four State Insurance Company, Wilmington, Delaware. Attention, Mr. Don Free, Chief Investigator Claims Division. Since your office authorized me to conduct certain inquiries based on new information supplied by Oren Vance, I am billing you accordingly. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Todd matter. Expense account item one, one dollar and eighty-five cents. One phone call to Don Freed in Wilmington, Delaware, to discuss the burglary that had occurred six months before in the Long Island home of Norman Todd. The case was a complete stalemate. The police and the insurance investigators had been unable to locate the thieves or trace any of the loot, which included jewelry, silver, and wearing apparel that had been taken from the residence. I requested Don to forward whatever details they had, along with an accurate list of the stolen items and complete descriptions. Expense account item two, two dollars, cab fare. To and from the office of International Adjustment Bureau, where I refresh my memory concerning Oren Vance. A good look at the files, and I remembered him well. Back in 1947, he'd been involved in a well-engineered swindle of the Seaman Clothing Company. Almost got away with it. And it was my investigation and testimony that finally put him behind the bars. Hi. Huh? Vance? Yeah. Oh, hello, Dollar. You haven't changed a bit. You have. Yeah, sure I have. You took seven years of my life away from me. Did you do what I told you to on the phone? People like you don't tell me what to do, Vance. <laughs> Come on in. Oh, sure. Thanks. Nice place you got here. Yeah, I like it. Sit down. Tell me what's on your mind. Look, Dollar, don't treat me like a con, huh? Even if I am one. I'll sit down, yeah. I'll have a smoke with you. I'll talk with you. Okay. Okay, have one. Hmm. Thanks. Uh, it's just that everybody, everybody's doing it. Treating me like that. Even my wife went over to see her the first day I got out. You know what? She wouldn't let me in the house. She gave me $40 and told me to go out and get a decent job. Work hard, she said, and in six months, if everything is okay and you're not in any trouble, you can come home to me and the kids. And if not, she says, I'm going to divorce you. Mm -hmm. What do you want me to say? Offer me a seat. Invite me to sit down. I'm a human being, too. Sure. Thanks again. Well? Why, well, I thought about it a lot. You know... If you hadn't been out to get me eight years ago, I, I might have had you over to dinner. Maybe we could have been friends. Yeah, maybe. Now, what's this all about, Vance? Uh, okay. I can't get a job. I'll have to go in business for myself. I need a steak. That's why I called you. Go on. Now, did you do like I, like I asked you to? Look up the Todd case? I call Wilmington about it. There's nothing new happening. I'm happening. That's something new. And I can help for a price. All right, go on. But I want my name out of the picture. Could you fix that? Probably. But I'd have to talk to the police sooner or later. All I'm asking is your promise to keep my name out of it. Otherwise, it's no go. Well, tell me something about it before I make any promises, Vance. Fair enough. You got a list of the stolen items? Not yet. Won't be here until tomorrow. Now, when it gets here, you'll find it was a mink coat in that lot. I think most of it was jewelry, but it was a mink coat. Labeled from Zellerback Furs in New York... 
And the inside lining carried this serial number, 27356. All right. Take it easy, Vance. Expense account item three, $2.50. Another long-distance phone call to Wilmington and Don Freed, who verified that the serial numbers furnished by Oren Vance fitted those in the stolen mink coat. I explained how I'd come about the information at hand, leaving out any mention of names. Freed talked with his boss and phoned me back a half an hour later. You can go ahead and work on it, Dollar. There's a $5,000 reward posted. $5,000? we will split it between you and, uh, and your friend, if anything worthwhile turns up. Okay? Uh, suppose it's nothing. Okay. Swindle sheet, too. All right. Okay, Vance. You're in business. How does it work? You tell me where the coat is and who has it, and I'll handle it from there. If it turns out to be anything, you'll get paid for it. All I've had so far is talk. I'll tell you where the coat is and who has it, but before I do that, you give me a check. What? A check for 2500 You date it two days from now. It'll give you a chance to look into it and see if I know what I'm talking about. And you can stop payment any time within two days if my tip doesn't work out. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, I'll have the check and bye-bye. Where to? Homewood, Indiana. My plane leaves in an hour. I may want you around for some questions. No, I'll give you the tip. That's all. You ask somebody else the questions. Well? Okay. What's the matter? You afraid? Sure. Haven't you noticed? I'm a stool pigeon. I noticed, and it worried me. But I arranged for him to have the post-dated check in return for which he gave me a name and an address. Gloria Tierney, 1231 East 57th Street, New York City. Expense account item four, $3, cab fare to the airport. I saw Orrin Vance off on a westbound plane to Indiana. Forty-five minutes later, I boarded flight 37 for New York. Expense account item five, $18.85. The cost of getting me from Hartford to New York. I checked in at the New Western and went directly to the Metropolitan Police Station where I asked if Gloria Tierney had a record. A check in the police files revealed that she was not listed. About 7 o'clock, I had a bite to eat and then I walked over to the 57th Street address, a small apartment building. Yes? Hello. Hello. I'm looking for Gloria Tierney. Oh, you have the wrong apartments right across the hall. I was over there. No one answered. Well, she must be out. I'm the manager here. Would you like to leave your name? I'm Johnny Dollar. But I wonder if you could tell me where to find her. No. No, I can't. But I'll be glad to give her your name and ask her to call you. Well, that sounds fair enough. I'm at the New Weston Hotel. Oh? You're from out of town? Yes. An old friend of Gloria's? No, no. I'm uh, just on business. Well... I'll tell her you came by. Good, fine. By the way, uh, how long has Miss Tierney lived here? Mm, About a year. Why? Oh, I just wondered. Thank you. Johnny Dollar, New Weston Hotel. Uh Oh, that's right. Wait a minute. Here, take my card. Insurance? Sort of. The apartment house manager, it said Ethel Stromberg on the mailbox, smiled politely and closed the door. I went outside the building and took a plant across the street. I waited around for about three hours and saw no one go in or out of the building. I went back to my hotel. About midnight, the phone rang. Johnny Dollar. Hello, Mr. Dollar, please. Hi, Mr. Dollar. You left word for me. I'm Gloria Tierney. Oh, yes, Miss Tierney. I intend to leave town possibly in the morning, so I thought I'd better call you tonight. I hope it isn't too late. Not at all, Miss Tierney. What's it all about, Mr. Dollar? I'm an insurance investigator. I'd rather tell you about it in person. As I said, I expect to leave town tomorrow. Is it important? I think so, yes. Could I see you tonight? Well, I don't know. I could be there in 15 minutes. I don't understand. I'll come right over. Well, all right. I was there in less than 15 minutes, but things weren't all right. As a matter of fact, things looked all wrong. Gloria Tierney's apartment was darkened. She didn't answer when I knocked on the door. I tried it. The door was locked. You who? Hmm? Now, look here. I don't think you have any right to bother Gloria. Oh, it's you. Hello, Mrs. Stromberg. Well, where's Gloria? I don't know. You don't know? She was waiting to meet you. Ah. 
Well, out here in the hallway. She came in tonight, and I gave her your message. And then she went in and called you, and then came back out and said you were coming by. Yeah, well, she's gone. Well, that's funny. Hey, tell me, did you hear anyone out here? No. Well, maybe she went down to the drugstore. Drugstore's closed. Well, yes. Well, she'll probably show up. Yes, probably. You look worried, Mrs. Stromberg. I am. Gloria didn't seem like herself when she came in. Oh, what do you mean? Well, she was nervous and upset. I think she'd been crying. I don't know. Uh Uh-huh. Oh, I hope she's all right. Yeah, so do I. You're sure she isn't outside waiting for you? No, I didn't see any. Well, I'll look again. Do you see her? Not a soul. Had she been drinking? No, of course not. What was she wearing, Mrs. Stromberg? Oh, she had her coat on. Her mink coat? Yes. Well, how'd you know about her mink coat? A friend of mine. I'll take a look around out here. All right. Oh, wait a minute. I'll come with you. You know, of course, she might have gone... wait a second. Look, is that Gloria? Why, yes, I think so. Something's wrong with her. Yes. The girl crossing the street in the mink coat weaved slightly from side to side. As I got close to her, I could see she was a pretty girl in her late 20s, blonde hair, dark eyes. She hardly looked up as I came up to her, just stopped and stood there, weaving slightly. Miss Tinney? Yes, yes. Well, can I help you? I'm Johnny Dollar. Please. Well, come on, we better go inside. Yes. What is it? He he struck me. He he what? He struck me. And I... Oh, Mr. Dollar. Here, come on. Careful now. Sure. Oh. Easy. Easy now. Thank you. Thank you very much. You okay? Yes. Look out, that car. Uh, What? That car, no! All three slugs had hit her and she fell back into my arms. By the time I could reach for it and get my gun out, the black Cadillac and whoever was driving it were out of sight around the corner. And there'd been no light on the rear license plate. Oh. Easy now, easy. Mr. Dollar, those were oh. shots. What? <gasps> Mr. Dollar. Call the police, call the police, quick. But I, oh. yes, right away. You know, let's see if we can. Mr. Dollar. Mr. Dollar. Don't try to talk, Gloria. Don't try to move. We'll have help here in a minute. Oh. Johnny Dollar. Dan Mapes, New York Police Department, Mr. Dollar. Oh, hi. I just went over your statement to the officers who went to the scene of the shooting. Pretty rough business. Yeah. How's the girl? She hasn't regained consciousness. We've got to get on with this, Dollar. There's some questions I want to ask you. Sure. Glad to do what I can. Where can I meet you? What's the matter with right here at headquarters? Okay. Say in about an hour? Make it a half an hour. I said I want to get on with the case. Room 212, Sergeant Daniel Mapes. Okay, Sergeant. I'll be there. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Four State Insurance Company, Wilmington, Delaware. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Todd matter. A burglary that occurred six months ago, but the murder try occurred only a few hours ago. Expense account item six, $16.40, one telegram. From me to Chief Investigator Don Freed, Four State Insurance. I explained events up to date and requested that Freed contact their New York office and employ counsel for me in the event the New York police chose to hold me as a material witness in the shooting of Gloria Tierney. Ah, we aren't going to hold you. Why should we? I don't know. Why should you? Sit down. Take it easy. Okay, thanks. So, uh, you're a freelance insurance investigator. Yeah, that's right. Working for a four state out of Wilmington, huh? That's right. Okay, suppose you give it to me. Well, you got it right in front of you there in that report. I told it to the investigating officers right after the shooting last night. Uh, now you tell it to me. All right. I made an appointment to meet this girl. She called me about 12 o'clock midnight, and I went on over to her apartment. Uh huh. She wasn't around when I got there, so I waited and talked to her landlady. A few minutes later, I saw her coming across the street. I went over to meet her because she looked like she'd been hurt or something. Hmm. 
I walked your bank across the street. Somebody pulled up in a car just as we got to the curb. It says here, Black Caddy, 1955 Coupe de Ville. Yeah, I didn't pay too much attention. What was the license number? Couldn't tell. It was blacked out. Okay, go on. There was a man in it. I didn't see his face. Didn't even notice him, really. He, well, he just started shooting. The girl was hit three times. I was trying to help her, and he got away. Well, what else? That's it. Okay. Tell me why you were in here yesterday afternoon checking to see if this Gloria Tierney had a record. I was about to contact her. I wanted to know if she'd ever been in trouble. Now tell me what you're working on. The Todd case. Todd? Yeah, burglary out in Long Island about six, seven months ago. I had reason to believe the girl might be able to help me on it. Hmm. Because of what? Because of her mink coat. Well, I'm glad you answered that way, Dollar. The coat's in the lab now. They're looking it over. We found it listed in our stolen property files. So far, your story is okay, but believe me, it isn't over yet. Huh? Tell me more. We know about the coat. We want to know about the girl who was wearing it. <sighs> Sorry, I can't help you. We didn't have her prints on file here, but we sent them off to Washington. She's still unconscious. She's in pretty bad shape. She can't talk. You can. What's her angle? I don't know. You don't know who shot her. You didn't get the license number. You just stood there and let it happen. All you were interested in was your mink coat. Look, I... Is that what you're trying to tell me? I might be through trying to tell you anything, pal. Don't get smarty pants with me, Dollar. I got myself a shooting to straighten out. I'll straighten it out any way I can. What else did she have in the Todd business? You tell me. Nothing. A small diamond ring on a little finger. It's not on the stolen property list. Tell me, Dollar, did your insurance company pay off this claim? Yes, the whole thing. About 75000 75000 That's right. Well, at least you got the coat back. Even if it has got three bullet holes in it. Maybe we'll get a line on the whole job. If she regains consciousness. Meanwhile, you can sit here and tell me about your tip. What? Who put you on to Gloria Tierney? No, no, I'm, I'm afraid I can't tell you that. Why not? Because I promised not to disclose any names. Oh, for... I can tell you this much, though. The man who told me about Gloria Tierney couldn't possibly have had anything to do with the Todd case. He was in prison when it happened. Let's have his name so I can check it. He's in Indiana now. He's got a name in Indiana. What is it? Sorry. You going to sit there and tell me he gave you a name to start with and that's all you bought? Yep. Suppose I told you I don't believe anything. And then I think I'll hold you for a while until you forget about whatever deal you made with an ex-con. Well, suppose I told you that a lawyer for my insurance company is on his way down here right now just to see that I get treated right. <laughs> What's funny? You. You insurance guys. You know what? You give me a pain. Right here. We went on like that a little while. Then I accompanied Sergeant Mapes to Gloria Tierney's apartment. A full crew of technicians were there giving the premises a complete check. Mapes dispatched two sets of detectives to cover the neighborhood for possible witnesses to the shooting. Another pair began to cover the apartment house itself. I went with Mapes to talk to the manager, Mrs. Stromberg. She looked white and shaken. You remember, Mr. Dollar? Yes. Hello, Mr. Dollar. How's poor Gloria? Not very good, Mrs. Stromberg. She's still unconscious. And we're still pretty much in the dark about all this, Mrs. Stromberg. Where is she? What hospital? I'd like to go see her. Maybe there's something I can do. Best thing you can do is try to help us find out who shot her. She's at the police emergency hospital right now, Mrs. Stromberg. I'll have them phone you when she can see people. Well, thank you. Oh, what an awful thing. She... Well, what's it all about? Why would anyone want to shoot Gloria? We hope we can ask her that question. Right now, we're going to try to find out all we can, and maybe you can help us. Well, I hope so. What can I tell you? Where she worked, how she lived, what people she knew. Oh, dear. Yesterday, you told me you'd known her for a year. Yes, ever since she moved in. All right. Was she a nice girl? Of course she was a nice girl. Quiet, minded her own business. Where'd she work at? Well, I don't know. I mean, Gloria doesn't work as far as I know. Who pays her rent? She always gave me a check. Who gave her a check? Well, I really don't know. I... Don't you know anything? What's the matter with you? Well, I'm trying. Mapes, no. why don't you go sit down? All right, I'll sit down here. Mrs. Stromberg, what can you tell us about her? Do you know where we can contact her family? Think about it. Well, I don't know. I know they live in California somewhere, but that's all I do know. She talked about them now and then. Uh-huh. How about her friends here in town? What about them? Well, for instance, the man who drove the black Cadillac last night. 
I never saw that car around here before. Did she talk about her friends to you? Why, no. Well, she's a pretty girl, young. Boyfriends? Oh, yes, she did talk about them now and then. Do you suppose one of them had something to do with this? Mrs. Stromberg, some guy pulled up in a black caddy last night and pumped three slugs into her. She acted funny before that, according to you. Run out when she was supposed to meet Dollar here. Don't you know if any of her friends drove a car like that? No. You know this, but you don't know that. What kind of a friend were you? What? What kind of a friend were you? That girl's lying in a hospital right now. She's got a slug here, another one here, and here. They've operated twice. You weep and holler and stand around wringing your hands about her, but you won't open your mouth about helping us find who did it. Now, let's start with that car again. You've got the front apartment here. You can see the street from those two windows. Have you ever seen that black caddy here before? Yes. Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? Whose is it? I don't know. I mean, I don't know his full name. Well, what do you know about him? His name is Bill something. <laughs> Bill something. Yes. That's a big help. What does he look like? Where does he work? What does he do? I don't know. I really don't know. She never introduced me to him, but she talked about him. She'd say, Bill's coming by tonight, or Bill did this, or Bill did that, but she never mentioned his last name. But he drove the caddy. Yes. Now, what does he look like? I told you, she never introduced me. I heard that part. But I know if someone young and fresh and pretty like Gloria Tierney lived across the hall from my wife, my wife would be at the window every time she heard the bell ring or heard a car drive up out front. She'd want to see who was buying her the candy and flowers, who was knocking on the door. Isn't that so, Mrs. Stromberg? Yes. I mean, no. Yes. Well, what do you mean? Now, look. For the third time, what does this guy, Bill, look like? Well, he's tall and very dark. Tall? What does that mean? Tall like me? Tall like Dollar? Tall like what? Like Mr. Dollar. How old? How'd he dress? What kind of bill? Easy, easy, man. Why don't you go through that offering me to sit down part now? All right, all right. I was wrong about you, Mapes. I admit it. Well, maybe I was kind of wrong about you, Dollar. Hardly anybody ever admits anything these days. Okay. I'm sorry I'm raising my voice, Mrs. Stromberg. But tell us about the man. All you can remember about Bill. Heavy? Light? A husky fellow, and he dressed very nicely, too. What color was his hair? Dark, I think. He always wore a hat. How about his eyes? I don't know. Uh -huh. About how old would you say? Oh, 30, maybe 35. I, I'm not very good at ages. How often did he come here to see her? Oh, once or twice a week. Gloria's been going with him? Yes. Did she ever mention where he works or what he does? No, no, she never mentioned that. Do you have any idea how long she's known him? How long she's been going with him? Well, I have no idea. I just know he's been coming to see her ever since she moved in here. This, uh, Bill... Would you say he had money, Mrs. Stromberg? Yes, I'd say so. He drove that big, expensive car and always dressed so nice. And, of course, he gave Gloria that coat. The mink coat? Yes. Oh. Do you know if he ever gave her any jewelry? I don't know. I don't think so. Gloria would usually run across the hall and show me when he gave her something. Mostly they were small gifts, candy, and things like that. But I don't remember if he ever gave her any jewelry. Did he ever bring any friends here? I don't know. All right. Was Gloria going to marry him? Oh, she never talked about it. You sure about that? Yes, she never said, and I never asked. Why? Why not? Well, I don't know. I never asked her. I wanted to, but I never asked her. You think right away I've been a busybody watching that girl and so on. Well, yes, I watched her from time to time, and I was her friend here. But there are some things we just didn't talk about. There sure were. Well, as you ask me questions, I realize how much we didn't talk about. I can't tell you where she came from or where her family is or who Bill is or what she planned for the future. I just know she was a nice, decent, honest sort of a girl. Yes, we got that impression, Mrs. Stromberg. Anything you want to ask, Dollar? No, no, no. My uh, apologies again for raising my voice. Thank you for the information, Mrs. Stromberg. Hmm. Come on, Dollar. Okay. Goodbye. 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 Well, you got it out of her. Yeah, but I don't trust her. It took too much work. Are you really as tough as you look? Sure. <laughs> You're a good cop, Mapes. <laughs> Thanks. I like to have somebody mention that every five years. Well, better get out this guy's description. Yeah. Now, there's a hall phone right there. Uh-huh. Well, we sure haven't got much to go on. 
Communications, please. Here's Dan Mapes. I uh, want an APB out on... What? Oh, I'll give it to you later. Johnny, the uh, hospital phoned in two minutes ago. Gloria. Yes. They think she's dying. Johnny Dollar. Uh, this is Dr. Kane, police emergency hospital. You left word for me to call you, Mr. Dollar? Yes, sir. I'm with Sergeant Mapes. Has there been any change in Miss Tierney's condition? Uh, no, sir. No, none. Do you think she'll make it, Doctor? It's hard to say right now. Sometimes they rally. Sometimes not at all. Doctor, it's very important that we see her. I don't know whether to do any good, Mr. Dollar. We want to question her. Yes, I know, I know. Well, why don't you and Sergeant Mapes come on over to the hospital? All right, sir, we'll be right there. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Four State Insurance Company, Wilmington, Delaware. The following is an accounting of expenditures incurred during my investigation of the Todd matter, the burglary that resulted in a shooting. On a tip from an ex-convict named Orrin Vance, I came to New York to question one Gloria Tierney. My information was that she had in her possession an expensive mink coat, part of a $75,000 burglary at the Todd home on Long Island. Gloria Tierney was shot and seriously wounded by an unknown gunman before I was able to question her about the coat. A description of her assailant and how she had obtained the coat were still to be ascertained when Sergeant Dan Mapes and I arrived on the second floor of emergency hospital. Mr. Dollar? Yes. Oh, I'm Dr. King. Oh, yes, this is Sergeant Mapes. How right. do you do? Has she managed to talk yet, Doctor? No, and she may not. I see. Now, before we go in, I hope both of you will carefully frame only your most pertinent questions. Two minutes is about all I can give you with her. Sure, Doctor. Uh, well, better put your cigarettes out in that. Oh, oh yeah. Ego facultate mihi ab apostolia, sede tributa indulgentiam plenarium et remissionem omnium peccatorem tibi concedo. Father Deering wanted In his word. Patris, yeah. Et fili et spiritus sancti. Amen. All right, Father? Yes. Hmm. <sighs> Is she conscious? Oh, just a minute. Yes? She can hear you, I'm sure. You want to go ahead? Uh, I suppose so. Has to be official. Are you Gloria Tierney? Is Gloria Tierney your name? Yes. Do you understand that you're seriously hurt? Do you understand that? Yes. Can you tell us how you came about these injuries, Miss Tierney? Miss Tierney? Bill. Bill. Bill shot you? Yes. Well, what is Bill's full name? Where can we find him? Bill. Where can we find him? Who is he? <coughs> Doctor? <coughs> Watch out. Nurse, hand me the hypo. Quick. No. This might help. Sorry, fellows. Nothing more I could do. Gloria Tierney died at 3.35 in the afternoon without revealing the full name of the man who had shot her the night before. Expense account item seven, six bucks, drinks. Myself and Sergeant Mapes. Well, we're sure of two things. Are we? Yeah. His name's Bill. This is the worst whiskey I ever tasted. Uh, 
There ought to be a law. I think there is, Sergeant. I'm going to ask you something, baby. Outside of the fact that that girl up there died a few minutes ago and was wearing a stolen mink worth $11,000 that you've been wanting to get your hands on, what about her? How does it strike you? She looked like a nice girl. Yeah. She looked like the best kind of girl ever made. What else? What would someone like that be doing in a stolen mink coat? Exactly. What would she be doing with a stolen mink coat? Outside of having herself a time with a guy named Bill who gave it to her. You call that having herself a time? Sure. I'd like to get drunk. Every bum in town's named Bill. <sighs> this is bad. Terrible. Worst stuff I ever drank. You can say that again, baby. Worst stuff I ever drank. Waiter. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Bring us two more of the same. Only make them double. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. <laughs> I'm glad to see you aren't fussy, Dolly. Not a bit. Not a lousy bit. You know, I looked at you when you came in my office and I said to myself, I got a wiseacre on my hands. Mm -hmm. I got a wheeling, dealing wiseacre who's got himself a little tip and he's going to keep it all to himself. I said, why do I have to put up with this kind of trouble? Why don't I just toss this bum in the cooler and go about my business? I'm a copper. I got work to do. Why fool with an insurance stick, I said. <laughs> but I'm very happy to see you aren't a fussy fella, baby. Very happy. All right. You made a speech. No, I'll make one. Go ahead. Well, I stood in a hospital room and I watched a human being die. Oh, it's part of my job, part of your job, too. But for myself, I don't like it. If I have to go into why every man's death diminishes me, I'm going to fall all over myself because I never could go into that kind of stuff. Yeah, I know what you mean. But I'll say this. That girl that died in there was... Well, she was the kind of girl I could have kept right on seeing. Yes, I'd like very much to have knocked on her door almost any old night. Sergeant, I would have liked that more than I could tell you. She wore a stolen mink coat. Remember? I remember. I remember. But I can sit here and feel bad about it, can I? You sure can. I'll feel bad with you. Eh, look at them early eaters, Dollar. Coming in to drink their dinners. Don't change the subject. I have to. We got work to do, pal. Yeah. Here we are, gentlemen. Uh, as long as it's here. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers yourself. <coughs> oh... Well, there ought to be a law. You said that. I remained with Sergeant Mapes the rest of the day as he continued his investigation of the death of Gloria Tierney in the Todd burglary. The apartment where she'd lived finally yielded some information. Here. Here it is. Letters from a Robert J. Tierney in Riverside, California. Looks like her father, maybe. Yeah. I'll have the business office down at headquarters notify him. Hey, what's this? Huh? Picture. Mm hmm. Nice looking guy. Yeah. Love Bill. <laughs> he loved her, all right. Anybody identified this yet? That uh, Mrs. Stromberg's supposed to be here right now. What time you got? I passed. She said she'd be here at six. Hey, Sergeant, did you get anything on the bullets? Well, they didn't check with anything in our lab. Ballistic says it was an Army Colt, old model. Pretty good for killing. And what gun isn't? Yeah, you're right. Hello? Oh, hello, Mrs. Stromberg. We've been waiting for you. Come in. Hello? Hello, Mr. Dollar. Hi. Do I have to answer any more questions? Oh, a couple, if you don't mind. I'm just all worn out. I can't get over this terrible thing happening to Gloria. Did you ever find out about her family? We're going to contact them right now. Seems they live in Riverside, California. Yes. Yes, I believe that's what she said. I want to ask you one question, Mrs. Stromberg. Take a look at this picture. Yes. Do you know him? Oh, yes, that's Bill. The man Gloria Tierney's been going out with these last few months? Yes. The man who drives the black Cadillac? Yes, the Cadillac. Oh, I wish I could tell you his full name. 
Did he do this terrible thing? It looks like it, Mrs. Stromberg. Oh, dear. Have you arrested him yet? We haven't found him yet. Well, I hope you do. I hope you clear this up. I left word for the office to get me here. What about her things? Hello. Her family will probably take charge as soon as they're contacted. Oh, that poor girl. That poor girl. So alone now. Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Stromberg, did Gloria Tierney ever mention to you that she'd been married? Married? Gloria? Yeah. Why, no, she never mentioned it. Was she? Married in the state of New York in 1951. Divorced in 1953. Routine check of vital statistics. What was her husband's name? Bill. Bill Powers. Sergeant Mapes requested immediate file checks on William B. Powers, the ex-husband of Gloria Tierney. From it, he learned he had no criminal record in the state of New York. His home address was up in Westchester County, one of the suburbs of the big city. I drove out there with Sergeant Mapes. Oh, what's this all about? Do you know a woman named Gloria Tierney, Mr. Powers? Well, sure. We were married once. Why? She was shot to death last night, Mr. Powers. A Gloria? Yeah. Are you sure? We're sure. Shot? Oh, well, what, 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 what happened? How could a thing like that happen? That's what we're trying to find out, Mr. Powers. I can't believe it. Glory, it did. Have you seen her lately? Uh, Have you? Uh, uh, yes. I saw her last week. We had a drink together. Are you sure it's Glory? We'd make sure before we came here with news like that. That's right. Mr. Dollar here isn't a policeman. He's an insurance investigator. Miss Tierney was wearing a stolen mink coat when it happened. Stolen? Are you sure? We're sure. We checked everything, well, Mr. Gloria Powers. would never steal anything. She was a fine girl. A wonderful girl. Fool to ever let our marriage go on the rocks. Can you come with us, Mr. Powers? We'd like an identification. What? Oh, uh... Yes, of course. I'll, I'll, I'll get my coat. Excuse me. Want to smoke, Johnny? Yeah, thanks. Well, he isn't the bird in the picture, Johnny. No, not at all. Still, he... What is it, Johnny? You checked the driveway out there? No. Take a look, the side window. Uh-oh. Yeah. 55 Cadillac Coupe de Ville. Sure is, Sergeant. Johnny Dollar. Long distance operator, Wilmington, Delaware, is calling you. Okay. Go ahead, please. Johnny? I do. Well, this is Don Freed. What's happening there? Your expenses are running away up, and we haven't gotten a report from you. I've been too busy. What's that supposed to mean? That's supposed to mean that the tip I got was good and it was bad. Yes, Gloria Tierney, 1231 East 57th Street, had a mink coat that was stolen from the Todd estate. No, she didn't tell me much about it because she got herself shot down in the street last night. Yes, I'm working with the police here trying to find out how she comes by the coat. But what I want... Listen, an hour ago I went out to see an ex-husband of hers. His name's Bill Powers, and he seems to be the bird we're looking for. You know what he did? He cried and blubbered all the way down to the morgue. And he's in there right now making a positive identification. I don't blame him for crying. So what's new with you, Mr. Expense Account? Boy, you're a real man-eater today, aren't you? I sure am. Bye. <laughs> Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Four State Insurance Company, Wilmington, Delaware. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Todd matter. Expense account item eight, 20 cents, aspirin. I bought them in a drugstore across the street from the morgue. I figure I needed them. On the way down in the police car, the ex-husband of Gloria Tierney gave us a very little information about her activities up until the time of her death. After he made the identification, we all walked across the street. Expense account item nine, 30 cents, three cups of coffee. Sergeant Mapes, Bill Powers, and myself. Powers cried a while, then straightened out somewhat. I hope you get whoever... Whoever did this terrible thing, Sergeant. 
I hope you get them real fast. You sure want to, Mr. Powers. Why would anybody do that to Gloria? Why? Maybe you can help us answer that. We hope you can, Mr. Powers. Oh, you. You're just interested in that coat she was wearing. Well, mister, I don't believe she was wearing a stolen coat. What do you think of that? I think that's a pretty fair way to think right now. But it's not very practical since we already have proof that it is a stolen fur and that she was wearing it. Yeah. How about some more coffee? That's cold. What? Oh, no. Look, we're just trying for the facts of the matter, Mr. Powers. I saw Gloria Tierney. I know what kind of a person she was. But we have to start somewhere. You can understand that. Yeah, I suppose so. Now, you told us you saw her last week for a drink. That's right. Have you been seeing her right along? Yeah, sure. Even though you were divorced a year or so ago? Yeah. Yeah. Did you know she's been going with someone else, too? Yeah. Bill? Yeah. Bill Chambers. That his name, Bill Chambers? Well, yeah, I don't know him, but she talked about him a lot. Here. Take a look at this picture. Is this him? Yeah, that's him. I thought you knew. You're sure this is him? Oh, sure. The picture was in her apartment. I've seen it there. One day I asked her who he was and Gloria told me about him. Well, what did she tell you about him? She just said she was going out with him. Oh, she told me that he asked her to marry him. She said he had a lot of money. Anything else? Oh, uh, I don't know. Did she happen to mention where he works? No. What kind of work he does? No. Do you know where we can get in touch with him? No, no, I don't know that either. I, I can't help you. I only know she's been going out with him. Hmm. I don't get this. You and her were divorced, but you kept on seeing her. And she got this new boyfriend. And she told you things like that? Yeah. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? Why'd you bust up? Oh, oh this and that. Kid stuff. I suppose... Spat over this and that. I don't know what exactly... Anyway, we were going to straighten it out. We were going to be married again. Oh, what about this Bill Chambers? No, she didn't want to marry him. She wanted to marry me again, she told me. When? Day before yesterday. She said she... She said she would marry me. Now she's dead. You know what kind of a car Chambers drives? Uh, oh, was she... A Cadillac. How do you know that? Oh, she told me about his car. Another thing, I went out and I bought one myself just like his. I thought it might do me some good with her. We were crazy, weren't we? Where were you last night? Home. Can you prove it? Oh, yeah. Home. All night. I was home while she was out getting herself killed. The name William Chambers was checked through the New York police files. 24 persons more or less fit the general description of the suspect. It took two days for Sergeant Mapes and his men to track down all the leads. Neither Mrs. Stromberg or Bill Powers could identify any of them. An all-points bulletin was issued describing the suspect in his car. Same results, Nothing. On the third day, the pawn shop detail turned up two items that had been taken in the Todd burglary. Uh, there they are, Jenny. Uh-huh. Watch and a ring. Todd lost a watch and a ring with a lot of other stuff. Case numbers in the watch check out. The ring's engraved. Uh-huh, yeah. Now, where were they picked up? Shop on 3rd Street. The proprietor bought them yesterday. A man who signed the buy book used the name James Agenian. Phony? Yeah. Gave an address on Polk Street. That was phony, too. We got a good description from the proprietor. Fits Chambers right down the line. Oh, then he was still in town yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. But this stuff's been on the hot sheet for a long time. If he's had any experience at all, he knew he was taking a chance trying to unload it. Probably trying to raise money to get out of town. What I was thinking. Well, if he keeps on trying to raise money and unload all these things, I'll have all the loot back. If he keeps on trying, we'll keep on trying. Johnny, we're going to get this, baby. Sergeant Mapes. Where? Okay. He does need money. Huh? They found his car. Used car lot up in the Bronx. He sold it at 10 o'clock this morning. At the used car lot, we learned that a man answering the description of William Chambers had driven in that morning and offered a black 55 Cadillac for sale. 
The used car lot manager had finally settled on a price and made out a check. He reported that Chambers seemed extremely nervous and anxious to make a quick deal. The car was impounded and examined. A full set of fingerprints on the steering wheel and dashboard gave us a positive identification on William Chambers. Oh, well, what do you know? William Charles, William Carls, William Charles, Walter Cameron. One, two, three, seven aliases. Real name, William Charles. Male, Caucasian, age 33. 178, 61. And let's see, 14 arrests, two convictions. Both car thefts. Hmm. Quite a boy. Well, we got a real tag on him now. Shouldn't be long before we pick him up. Hmm. Doesn't look like a killer, does he, Jenny? I don't know. What's a killer supposed to look like? The search for William Charles continued. Associates and relatives listed in his criminal file were contacted and questioned. All denied knowledge of his whereabouts. In the meantime, two more pieces of stolen property connected with a Todd burglary were recovered by the pawn shop detail. Expense account item 10, $3, one telegram to four state insurance in Wilmington. Explaining our progress in the case and listing the recovered items. Johnny Dollar. Are you interested in finding Bill Charles? Who's this? My name's... Never mind. Do you want him or don't you? Sure I want him. I'm at Traft's restaurant on 42nd off Broadway. Can you meet me? Yeah. 15 minutes. I'm in a gray suit, pinstripe. I'll be sitting alone. I'll watch for you. Expense account item 11, 75 cents, cab fare. From my hotel to Schraff's restaurant. A small, pretty brunette woman in nice clothes was seated at a table all alone. She looked more like a housewife on a shopping tour than someone who might be connected with a bandit and a killer. Sit down, Mr. Dollar. Okay, sure. There's a reward posted for William Charles, isn't there? For that Todd matter? That's right, $5,000. Well, I get it if I turn him over to the police. Not all of it. Half of it goes to an ex-convict who tipped me off in the first place. Half? Yes. You don't seem very anxious to get him. Oh, we're anxious. But that's the way it is. This other half of the 5,000 is spoken for. I want to get something else straight. What happens to me? What do you mean? I've known he had a part in that Todd matter for a long while. I haven't said anything. Does that make me a party to it or something? I don't know. Well, this is going to get me in trouble. If I have to spend the money for lawyers to keep out of jail, I don't want any part of it. All right. My company will cover that part. Now, where's Charles? Not so fast. I better have something in writing. Something that says your insurance company will pay me a reward and give me help if I get in trouble. I'll talk to them. I'm thinking of the future. I'm going to have one once this is over. Are you? Yes. Yes, I am. Now, how long will it take you to arrange this? Oh, about an hour. I can do it by phone, I guess. That'll be fine. Who are you? Melva Charles. His wife? Yes, that's right. $2,500. $2,500. Not much for a husband. He's not much of a husband. He was once, but then he had to give away a mink coat and spend time away from me. I see. I doubt it. You people hardly ever see anything. We try. You make the arrangements. I'll meet you again in, say, two hours. Two hours. I gave her a 50-second start before I left the table. When I got out on the street, I was just in time to see her climb into a cab. I was trying to hail one to follow her when a black coupe pulled up to the curbing. Come on in, baby. Hey, Mapes. Get in. The light's changing. That is Melva Charles in that cab up there. Yeah, that's who she said she was. She wants to sell you her husband for the reward, doesn't she? Yeah. What's the delay? She wants to be sure she'll be handled right, the money and all. Say, how did you get in on this? <laughs> Very dirty trick, baby. Everybody my men questioned about Charles mentioned your name, where you were staying, and what interest the insurance company had in this matter. Somebody was bound to look you up, especially Mrs. Charles. So we've kept an eye on you. Now where are we, Sergeant? Her name was Melva Thaler before she married Charles. Her old man had a pot of money back in Minnesota. But she couldn't keep out of trouble and got herself disinherited. Money's always been her problem. Isn't it everybody's problem? Not the way it is with her. You should see her record. How much you offer her? Half. The other's spoken for. $2,500. Well, Charles is no good to her now. If he sticks his head out, he'll get caught. So she might as well cash in what she can on him. Hmm. Nice people, huh? Swell. Uh-oh, she's leaving the cab. Get down to the corner and park. Can you see her? She went into the apartment building. Let's go. Which apartment, Johnny? Here we go. Right. Nowhere. Beats me. Just a minute, Johnny! Uh, what? 
Before I went down, I heard it go off a couple more times. It must have been six inches from my head. My eyes couldn't see, and my feet couldn't move. But I could hear. Johnny! Hold on! Hold on, baby! Johnny Dollar. Hi, baby. Dan Mapes. Glad they gave you a telephone in your room. Yeah, that's the only thing good about it. Well, hospitals are designed to make a man impatient. You're a pretty lucky fella at that. Let me tell you about your operation. Yeah, please do. You stopped two slugs. They pried one out of your neck and another one out of your rib cage. Missed your heart by a snake's whisker. I was luckier than Gloria Tierney. Yeah, yes you were. I'm on my way up to see you. Don't run out on me. Oh, fat chance. <laughs> Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Four State Insurance Company, Wilmington, Delaware. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Todd matter. Expense account item 11, $3.05, breakfast. I got mad at the nurse when she brought in a bowl of hot cereal and a glass of milk. So I bribed an orderly to slip across the street and get me a tray of bacon and eggs. I was just finishing same when up came Sergeant Mapes. He looked haggard and tired and worried. You nearly got it for good, baby. I got enough of it. You sure did. What do you remember, if anything? Well, we tailed Melva Charles to an apartment house. We stepped inside, and somebody began trying to kill me. And that's when I left town. Yeah, it was quite a mess. Coroner had a real job in his hands. Yeah. Hey, how about you? Not a scratch. Coroner, did you say? Yeah. Melva Charles got it. Her husband stuffed a butcher knife in her back. Oh. That was for trying to sell him out to you. Yeah. Yeah, maybe he thought he was worth more than 2500 Maybe. A man named Henderson, who happened to be walking down the hall at the wrong minute, took three in the head. He was dead before he hit the floor. A woman on the street got hit, not too bad. Two people outside, just getting into a car, got cut up pretty bad when bullets smashed their windshield. You keeping track of all this? I'm trying to. This all happened after we got there, huh? Yeah. You see, when you and I walked in there, William Charles had just finished killing his wife. He saw us and began pumping. You got hit, and I pumped back at him. You get him? Yeah, but... Not till he had shot up everybody else. He's on the floor above you, hanging on by a hair. He knew his ticket was up, and he just didn't care. It's my fault you're here, baby. I'd I'd have rather cut off my arm than get you in on this. What do you mean? Well, tagging you and going after her. I didn't use my head. You know what? What? <laughs> I still think you're a pretty good copper, Mapes. <laughs> Thanks, Johnny. Here, I uh, brought you a book of poetry. Poetry? Read. Take it easy. We'll be talking again soon. I felt awful. Sergeant Mapes dropped in later that afternoon, but I was half asleep. Vaguely, I remember they wheelchaired me down the hall for x-rays and lab tests. Expense account item 12, 10 cents, the morning paper. The story of the shooting was splashed all over page one and the solution to the Gloria Tierney killing in part. Slugs from William Charles' gun were matched with those that had killed Gloria Tierney. No mention was made of any loot from the Todd burglary being found in the Charles apartment. Between back rubs and sleeping pills, I worried about that. I didn't worry too much about the fact that William Charles, killer, gunman, burglar, was dying in the room directly above me. About midnight, Mafe showed up with a wheelchair. There we are. Now, you all ready to go up and see what he has to say? Yeah, sure, I guess so. I still have to finish my job. Uh, let's take it easy now. All right. Hey, a week. Is it? That won't last long. There. Now, here we go, baby. It was the second time within a week I'd been in a hospital room with a dying person. 
The first one had been a young and beautiful woman who had been shot by the man who now lay dying of police bullets. What did they... What they say? You know what they say, Charles. You haven't got a prayer. I didn't mean to kill Gloria. I didn't mean it at all. I want you to know that. You took a lot of pains to do it. I was there, remember? Yeah, I remember. Sorry. Been doing pretty good with those... Those house jobs at Todd Place, another one in St. Louis. Do all right. Enough to buy a nice car, live in a decent place, get around a little bit. Worked all along. I met her. I liked her, wanted to marry her. I did. Really did. You already had a wife. You think I'm kidding? I gave her a mink coat, didn't I? Thought that it cinch. She didn't want to take it. Told me she was going to marry some other guy. Some guy she'd been married to before. I got mad. I came back that night, let her have it. At all? <laughs> yeah, that's all. That's it. That's it, mister. You take it or leave it. How did you meet her? <laughs> Mutual friend. What friend? Ah, uh, none of your business. All right, this is my business. Where's the rest of the stuff? What stuff? The stuff you took from the Todd place. <laughs> Where have you got it? <laughs> Oh, what's funny? You, you think I'd tell you that? Oh, what's the difference now? Uh, <laughs> Come on, what's the difference now? Oh, it's a laugh, kiddo. You know what? I'd die before I tell you. <laughs> he died, and he didn't tell me. Not a word. Later, a private ambulance took me from police emergency hospital to my hotel room. Three days after that, I was able to get back on my feet. I went right down to Mapes' office at headquarters. How do you feel? Ah, uh, better now. Boy, you sure look lousy. Here, sit down, baby. All right, thanks. Should you be out of bed? Yeah, sure, sure. You're lying and you know it. Oh, I suppose so. Well, how's it going? You mean have we located the rest of the stuff? No, not a lick of it. Funny guy, wasn't he? He had his last laugh. Well, you shouldn't be worrying about this stuff now. You ought to be taking care of yourself. I am. I'm sitting here helping you worry. I'm not worried about anything. You're worried about the same thing I am. Where's all the rest of the Todd stuff? Oh, uh, it'll turn up somewhere. Why, Mr. Dollar... Hello, Mrs. Stromberg. I read about what happened to you in the papers. I'm sorry. I'm terribly sorry. Oh, well, I'm better now. Well, come in. Come in, please. Thanks. Say, you, you'd better sit down, Mr. Dollar. I'll get you a cup of coffee. Uh, do you have any bourbon? Why, yes, I think so. All right, so. I'll take that. Well, all right. Is water okay? Yeah, sure, fine. Should you be out of bed, Mr. Dollar? You know, everybody asks that. No, no, I shouldn't, and yet I should. Well, here you are. Oh, thanks. Well, here's cheers. Remember the night Gloria was shot? Of course, very well. You know, I've been worried about that night. Huh? Uh-huh. Remember I came over here and I told you I was in the insurance business and you said you'd have her call me when she came in? Yes. Well, I remember pretty clearly you said you'd have her call me when she came in, not if you saw her come in. Yes, did I? Uh-huh. You saw to it that she called me, Mrs. Stromberg. You also saw to it that she wasn't here to meet me when I got here. She was out, out there somewhere. Because by then you knew I was an insurance investigator. I don't understand you, Mr. Dollar. What you are you trying to You sent her out so he could take care of her, and you were waiting in the hall for me. Waiting for you? Why, no, I happened to see you, and I wondered You what... wondered what kind of cock and bull story you could give me to get rid of me. That's silly. They sound that way. Yeah, that's a good drink. But not so silly if you knew that coat she was wearing was stolen and that I was after it and her. How would I possibly know that? Because you introduced her to one of your friends one night and he went overboard for her. 
And eventually he gave her that little present. Are you saying that I had anything to do with Gloria's trouble? Yeah. Why, that's silly. Oh, here's something sillier. A small-time burglar and thief lay in a hospital bed yesterday and wouldn't tell me how he met Gloria Tierney. Oh, he was a real gallant one, this bird. He killed an innocent girl because she was wearing a mink coat and might tell me who gave it to her. Mr. Dollar. He shot up two or three people in an apartment, including me. He got shot himself. He knew he was dying. But a simple thing like telling me how he met her wouldn't come out. He wouldn't tell me that for anything. Now, where could he meet her? Was he her kind? Did he go in the same circles? Did he? Nah. He was introduced by a mutual friend, Mrs. Stromberg. You, the manager of the apartment house. No. Something else he wouldn't tell me. What happened to the rest of the loot from the Todd burglary? Two things he wouldn't tell me. He didn't have to when I sat down and thought it out. You've been working with him right along. You've been keeping all the stuff here. Oh, that's fantastic. Not so fantastic at all, Mrs. Stromberg, when you think that his wife, and she was a girl who'd do anything for money, they tell me, was willing to sell him to me for 2500 bucks. <laughs> 2500 bucks. when there's still over $60,000 worth of loot from the Todd burglary lying around. She didn't know where it was, but you do, Mrs. Stromberg. Well, if you say I do, I do. Now what? Let's go down to Sergeant Mapes. Oh, no, I... I'd like a good excuse to use this. Yes. Suppose you would. If I can't charm you or plead with you, can I buy you? You could have prevented her death. You practically ordered it. What is it you want? You... Behind bars. <laughs> You're silly, but I'll go. For a while, it did look silly. Mapes and his men searched the apartment house from top to bottom and found no trace of the Todd loot. That is, until they found a movable cement block in the basement. Well, the Todd matter ended with a 90% recovery of the stolen items. About $70,000 in dollars and cents. In lives, Gloria Tierney, one innocent bystander, and William Charles. For me, let's see. Expense account item 14, $162.30. Hotel and board while in New York. Item 15, $17.40. Airfare and incidentals back to Hartford. Item 18, $230. Miscellaneous. Expense account total, $1,095. Remarks, nil. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Remember, there'll be another intriguing story for you beginning next Monday night. Next week, a music lesson on a priceless Amati violin. Music and mystery and danger. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in this week's cast were Vivi Janis, Barbara Fuller, Shirley Mitchell, Lawrence Dobkin, Frank Gerstle, and Marvin Miller. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Roy Rowan speaking.